breaking news for you out of Schoharie, where there has been a serious crash at the intersection of Route 30 and Route 30A. Multiple ambulances, two helicopters have been called to that area. 20 people dead after a limousine plows through an intersection in Schoharie County. This is one of the biggest losses of life, loss of lives that we've seen uh, in a long, long time. Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Five years ago, a Saturday afternoon in the fall, as the news broke on October 6, 2018, of a serious crash at the bottom of Route 30 in Schoharie, nobody could have imagined what would unfold over the following hours, days, and years. In many ways, the Schoharie limo crash is a story of fate gone wrong. 17 close friends and family members in the back of a limousine on the way to a birthday celebration. They started their trip in a rented bus, but it broke down, instead taking the aging stretch limousine. As we'd later find out, a spotty service history meant it never should have been put on the road in the first place. Heading down a steep hill on Route 30 in Schoharie at speeds in excess of 100 miles an hour, blowing through a stop sign at the intersection with Route 30A, hitting a parked car and two pedestrians in a parking lot, and crashing to a halt. Those 17 friends, the driver, and two bystanders unbelievably lost. Their names forever immortalized in the Reflections Memorial at the scene of the crash. Brian Huff and his father-in-law, 70-year-old James Schnur, were standing near their SUV in the parking lot of Schoharie's Apple Barrel Country Store when the limo blew through the stop sign, hitting them and their empty vehicle. Brian's wife, Jackie, was standing nearby and witnessed the crash but was not hurt. Brian was gone, too. Her father was gone. It's just... Horrible. Huff, 46, was an associate professor at SUNY Oswego. The family was heading to a wedding when they decided to make a stop. Jackie's going to kill me for saying this. The perfect couple. Brian left behind a nine-year-old son, Ben. The 17 limo passengers were celebrating Amy Steenberg's 30th birthday. Her husband, Axel, had organized the party. They were headed to a brewery in Cooperstown. Amy lived in Amsterdam. She was a death investigator at the New York State Justice Center and a nursing supervisor at a nursing home on the weekends. She was also pursuing a graduate degree. Axel worked at Global Foundries. The couple had just married in June. I don't know how people move forward from it. There's so many people involved. There's so many people that have been affected, children involved that are gonna grow up without their parents and without their father. All three of Amy's sisters were also killed in the crash. They were fun-loving. They were wonderful girls. They'd do anything for you, and they were very close to each other, and they loved their family. They loved their parents. Abigail, the oldest, was riding along with her husband, Adam Jackson. She was 34, a teacher in the Amsterdam School District, and coached her daughter's soccer team. That was my favorite teacher. Like, I was always excited to go to school just to have her class. Adam, also 34, was a deputy commissioner at the Montgomery County Board of Elections. They leave behind two daughters, Archer, who was four at the time, and Al, who lost his parents at just 16 months old. You can't wrap your head around it. You just can't. Amy's other sister, Mary Dyson, and her husband were also in the limo. The couple lived in Watertown. Mary was 33, an Army veteran who served a year overseas in Iraq, building schools. She was co-owner of Upstate Construction Company in Watertown and was a coach at Star Spangled CrossFit. Rob Dyson worked at Stebbins Engineering and Manufacturing Company. Mary and Rob left behind a three-year-old son, Isaac. How can God take away so many people? at the same time and leave kids without parents. Thirty 
31-year-old Allison King was the second youngest of the four sisters. Allie lived in Boston Spa, was a graduate of SUNY Plattsburgh with a degree in speech communication. She was an organic gardener and enjoyed raising chickens and ducks. Allie was survived by her fiancé, Brian, her dogs, Bowie and Bear, and her parents, Linda and Thomas King, who lost all four daughters that day. It's one of the largest tragedies we've ever, we've ever had to deal with. Rich Steenberg was Axel's brother. They were really um, good brothers, I'll tell you. They were always there for me. Anytime I needed anything, they were always there. They always had my back for everything. Rich was father to a 10-year-old daughter, Aubrey, and a 14-year-old stepson, Owen. Amy and Axel's friends, Aaron and Shane McGowan, were also just married in June. We had a fantastic time. We celebrated, we had a great time, we smiled, we laughed, we joked. Aaron was born in Niskayuna and had most recently worked at St. Mary's Pediatrics in Amsterdam. Shane was an avid golfer and Yankees fan and worked for years as a hearing specialist at Miracle Ear. Best friend, roommate, brother, basically. Twenty-nine-year-old Amanda Rivenberg was a graduate of Colony Central High School and a graduate of SUNY Plattsburgh in 2011. Her family says she touched many lives through her work as associate director at Living Resources, where she helped people with disabilities. Amanda was the calm in a sea of chaos, chaos, craziness. Amanda kept everybody together. Sergeant Michael Ukai turned 34 on the day of the crash and was on board the limo. He honorably served his country as a combat veteran in U.S. Marine Corps during the Iraq War. Back at home, he worked in security and for GameStop. His family says he loved to help people. Everybody's so close in this area that everybody knows everybody everywhere. Matthew Coons was riding in the limo with his girlfriend, Savannah Versessi. Matthew's family described him as a gentle giant, a passionate individual who loved life and the art of weightlifting and bodybuilding. How long do you think it's going to take this community to be back to something like normal? To be honest, I don't know if, if I think it'll just be a, a new normal. I don't think you ever come back from a tragedy like this. Like her boyfriend, 24-year-old Savannah was also described as a fitness buff. Savannah had graduated college on a sports scholarship with a bachelor's degree in political science and business administration, working a full-time job through school. Her family says she was saving up to move to Texas and begin her lifelong pursuit of a law degree. Rachel Cavosi was 30 years old. She worked as a dental hygienist in Troy. She volunteered at a yoga and health center in Massachusetts. Amanda Hulse was attending the birthday celebration with boyfriend Patrick Cushing. Patrick's family describes him as a pure soul who could walk into a room of strangers and walk out with three new friends. He was employed with the New York State Senate at the time of his death. His family says Patrick participated in pretty much every sport available. Physically, he's the best player I ever played against or with. Just everywhere on the court. Rocket of an arm, just that all-around great player. Amanda was described by her family as a talented artist who loved to draw and paint and surprise her family with the gifts she'd create. We're all just missing that middle piece that Amanda definitely was. She definitely held our family together. Um, she was definitely the peacekeeper. When the Reflections Memorial here at the crash site along Route 30A in Schoharie opened in October of 2019, one year after the crash, one name was noticeably missing. Because of questions and concerns at the time, no stone bearing the name of driver Scott Lissanikia joined the 19 others until May of 2023. The foundation's board says at that time, when the trial of Nauman Hussein, the operator of the limousine company, wrapped up, conversations began among the families. On May 31st, the memorial was finally complete. An unlabeled stone with a lotus flower replaced with the imprint of Scott's shoes and his name. Scott had driven for the Prestige Limo Company for several years. His brother talks about the type of person he was. 
Oh, it's just very easygoing. Um, always thinking of, uh, you know, the other person. Um, hardworking. Scott had a son and a daughter and a loving relationship with his wife, Kim. It has been so difficult because I think about him every day. And now anyone who visits here will remember him as well, along with those 19 other beautiful souls who perished here on that fall day five years ago. It is impossible for us to grasp the enormity of the loss these families have suffered. As you saw, four beautiful sisters from the King family of Amsterdam were in that limousine and perished in the crash. For five years now, Linda and Tom King have been putting one foot in front of the other, turning to their faith and family and friends to go on without their girls. I sat down with this incredibly strong couple recently to talk about then and now. They told me when the accident happened, they never thought they would make it. Very few people can say to the minute when their whole world collapsed. Linda and Tom King can. It was almost six o'clock at night before we found out that there were our kids were in that accident. Their kids were on their way to a birthday party for their youngest sister with their closest friends and what the parents thought would be a party bus. Tom and Linda worried when they didn't hear from them. There were reports that a limo carrying a wedding party had crashed. Deep down, I, I was nervous, but if they wouldn't have said it was a wedding party, it would, I would have been worse. It was hours before they got the news. It was such a violent accident that there was no... Uh... There's no survivors. Despite starting families and careers, Allison, Abby, Mary, and Amy were never far apart. I mean, they had so much potential. Seven family members were lost, teacher Abby and government worker Adam, army vet Mary and husband Rob, both engineers, speech therapist Allison, and newlyweds, nurse Amy and engineer husband Axel. Tom and Linda's quiet lives spun out of control. I don't remember things for three weeks after that accident. It was just a deep hurt that you just seemed like you couldn't get it out of yourself. We couldn't believe it. I mean, to this day, we still can't believe it. But there was almost no time to grieve. There was a funeral with hundreds of mourners, grandchildren left orphans, a battering of media attention from around the world. We had people calling us up, reporters calling us up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my God. The sheriff's department ended up putting a, a car down at the end of the street for one or two nights just to keep people away. Insurance claims, mounds of paperwork, and an investigation into what happened that would propel limo operator Nauman Hussein into the headlines. Some people will go through steps and steps and steps to avoid what they should do, just for the sake of greed. He was too damn cheap to spend $2,000 getting these brakes fixed, which would have saved 20 lives. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And there was an outpouring of grief and sympathy. So much pain in a very small spot of the world. And financial support. A GoFundMe raised more than $200,000. We had four funerals to pay for. We had three houses to try and sell. We had seven cars. We had over $100,000 for the college loans that we had signed for them because they were just starting out in their lives. Then the trial of Nauman Hussein. I never went to the trials. I really didn't want to be connected to this guy and, and just have to look at him every day. I went. I wanted to be part of the, of the girls ju getting justice for the girls. But the justice meted out at that trial added a whole new level of hurt. We couldn't believe it. Here's a guy that was guilty of 20 lives, 20 deaths, and he got community service. And months later, unbridled joy when a new judge demanded a new price for justice. I am not going to abide by the <laughs> I can remember sitting in the courtroom cheering. We were just ecstatic. It came out of nowhere. It was like, wow, can you believe that? Five years later, Tom finds therapy in his garden. I used to get the girls come out and help me out now and then. And Linda finds peace in the kindness of others. So many of them, and they were all, all beautiful. They both say they've learned to live in the present and to keep moving forward. Our grandkids and our kids kept us going. Well, the other thing is our, our faith. 
Our faith, too, yes. I mean, our faith in, in, in God. And their faith in each other. You don't know your inner strength until you, you need to call on it. Did you think you would be able to deal with it? No, no. I think we, in the beginning, no. But as time went on, I think we did. We, we learned to accept that was our fate and um, we were gonna make the best of it. A beautiful tribute to those lost now stands at the crash site. It would be hard for most of us to visit, but for Linda King, it's one more special moment with Abby, Allison, Amy, and Mary. Actually, actually, I, I would kind of like, you know, hi girls. Yeah, somebody once asked me if, if, if you knew that you were gonna lose your children, would you have had children? And I said, yes, because we had 30 good years with those girls. I spent a morning with the Kings. We had a long conversation, and there's more of this interview posted online at CBS6Albany.com. Coming up, it was a trial expected to last weeks, but the twists and surprises started long before a jury was seated. I am not going to abide by the What it took to hold someone accountable for the deadly crash after so many years. After the Schoharie limo crash, the lives of 20 families changed overnight, but it took years for them to get some form of justice for the immense loss. In 2021, prestige limousine company operator Nauman Hussein struck a plea deal that would have given him no jail time, just probation, after he pleaded guilty to criminally negligent homicide charges. That plea deal, though, did not make it past state Supreme Court Justice Peter Lynch, who took over the case in 2022. Hussein's case fell into the hands of a jury in May of 2023, Ashley Kusakaki spent every day of the trial in Schoharie County Court. The trial played out just five minutes from where the crash happened. And every day walking around Schoharie and into this courtroom, you could just feel how heavily it's affected everyone. A roller coaster of emotions from the moment that put Hussein's hands in the fate of a jury. I am not going to abide by the to his eventual conviction. Find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Oh, it may have been a shorter trial than people thought, but for those of us sitting in that courtroom, that was a long trial. But the legal work began just days after the crash. He called me the Monday after the accident, which was Columbus Day. Defense attorney Lee Kinlan represented Nauman Hussein through the entire ordeal. The trial began May 1st with jury selection. 1,500 potential jurors were called, and it took five days to fill a jury box. Nauman Hussein never followed any regulations. Special Prosecutor Fred Wrench joins Schoharie County District Attorney Susan Mallory. Wrench argued in opening statements, Hussein failed to follow the regulations and take the limo out of service when instructed to. This is a case about personal responsibility. Kinlan argued Hussein took the limo to be looked at in May of 2018. It was not taken out of service for anything that caused the accident. The trial was expected to last four to six weeks with 136 potential witnesses. On May 15th, the prosecution would rest their case with only 24 people testifying, including Virgil Park, a Mavis discount tire store manager who said burn it when Hussein brought the limo in for service. And Brian Chase, a vehicle forensics expert who said the cause of the accident was catastrophic brake failure attributed to a lack of proper maintenance. It was also revealed later Park charged Hussein for brake work and parts, but the service was never done. The limo also passed an inspection with Mavis despite not meeting requirements. DOT inspector Chad Smith testified he placed the limo out of service multiple times for not having proper certifications, and yet the limo would still be found driving and transporting people. On May 17th, the fate of Nauman Hussein would be decided by the jury. Guilty. There was this constant breakdown of things that showed a pattern. I kept telling him, Michael, I will fight for you. I will not give up until I get justice. And praise God, it's finally been done. I want to thank the jury for doing an amazing job and listening to the evidence. 
And today is really about the families. Hussein was led away in handcuffs, guilty of 20 counts of manslaughter in the second degree. He's been in jail ever since, serving a maximum of five to 15 years. Really hoping that uh, the appeal goes through and um, either it comes back for a new trial or uh, the courts dismiss the case in its entirety. In August, Hussein was denied bail. Kinlan will keep requesting it as he appeals, and he says that he still believes Hussein shouldn't be the only one bearing responsibility. Whatever Nauman did, um, the, the criminal actions of, of Mavis um, were the real cause of the accident. And, you know, I'll believe that, uh, you know, until my, until my last day. Mavis Discount Tire has since settled with many families of the victims that sued, blaming it for improper repairs. And the Saratoga County District Attorney is also looking into New York State Police investigations into Mavis and their role in this crash. Nauman Hussein's criminal trial, just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to who's responsible for the crash. Was it 100% his fault? I want to say it was like 93, 94%. It was 4% Mavis and the other small percentage was New York State. Our Schoharie Limo Crash special newscast, five years after, continues next. The Schoharie Limo Crash set off an immense effort to enact regulation, to figure out where the systems failed, and prevent a future vehicular tragedy of that scale. As you saw, only one individual to date has faced any criminal repercussions for the crash, but the blame for the crash rest on the shoulders of several key groups, at least according to federal investigators. It makes me and my family sick to know that a $2,000 brake repair would have avoided this catastrophe. To this day, families of the 20 victims say brake work done at Mavis Discount Tire Shop in Saratoga County resulted in a broken brake line, which forensics prove was a key factor in the crash, causing brake failure as the limousine came speeding down Route 30. The DOT performed two checks on the limo in March of 2018, and again within a month of the crash. It was slapped with an out-of-service sticker. Owner Nauman Hussein has been accused of removing it. The DOT says issues identified in its first inspection were never fixed. Federal investigators with the National Transportation Safety Board, the New York State Inspector General, and a panel appointed by a state law all agreed there were failures in oversight and communication by the New York DMV and DOT. But ultimately, there was no evidence of actual misconduct from those departments. A 2021 federal infrastructure bill finally closed loopholes in safety standards that allowed stretched limos to operate for decades without federal oversight. Five years after the deadly Schoharie limo crash on October 6, 2018, the story is far from over. The state's limo safety task force could still reconvene in the years to come. There were ongoing civil cases. Nauman Hussein is appealing his guilty verdict, and the district attorney in Saratoga County has asked state police now to hand over information on the Mavis discount tire shop that worked on the limousine. Now, all of our news coverage over the last five years is available online at cbs6albany.com. It is a story we are certainly not done telling. And of course, the victim stories live on. They will be forever remembered. For now, we ask you to keep those 20 victims and their families in your thoughts. Thank you for watching.